Welcome to part 6 of this video tutorial series on animation trees. In the previous tutorial we added a blend that we could control to activate our prone animation. In this tutorial we're going to add a custom node that will blend between our stance animations for us. Now this tutorial is mostly aimed at programmers rather than artists, so it's less animation tree and editor centric and it will also be fairly short. I've got a file here called AT Anim Node Blend by Posture. I've included this file with supplementary materials for this tutorial, so you can open it up and have a look yourself. What I'll do is I'll run through, give you a quick explanation on exactly how this works, then we'll add it to our add-in tree and actually see it working. The basic idea, uh, idea is that we can create an add-in node that will get ticked, providing that we have this btickAnim in script property set to true. Only the UDK anim blend base class actually has uh, this variable and the functionality to allow us to tick in a script so you won't be able to extend any of your custom blends from the, the basic blend or the engine uh, blend classes. The usefulness of being able to do this is that where we would use uh, normal blends like I showed in the last tutorial, a basic anim node blend, uh, you can encompass a bunch of functionality into one specific node so you don't have to manually control the blends as you can see throughout this whole tick anim function here we call set active child depending on a couple of the properties in our pawn. This has a few purposes. Um, obviously we don't have to look up blends from our animation tree to be able to control them. All the logic is handled in the one place inside the node itself and it makes our anim tree look much cleaner as you'll see in a few moments. With animation trees we have this concept called relevance. A node becomes relevant when the weight towards that node is greater than zero. If we take a look at the animation tree for our existing blend you can see here that the orange represents, as well as the blend, it actually represents the relevance uh, of each of these nodes. So as you can see, when we're at zero, uh, this node here is relevant, while we're at zero, this node here is relevant, because the weight towards those, those nodes and those children is greater than zero. Because our relevance here is all the way towards walking, this node here is not relevant, so it doesn't get ticked. And this function here, the tick anim, only gets called when a node is actually relevant. The other thing we have in the uh, default properties here is these children, children 0, 1, 2, etc, etc. These are all the input links that we have. So these are two children on this node here. Um, when we have this set up, uh, bfixNumChildren is just a property that we can use to either allow or disallow children to be added to this node from the animation tree. So whereas in the past we could right click and go add child on some of our nodes, if we set bfix num children to true, we can't do that anymore. Every animation tree is set on a skeletal mesh component and usually a skeletal mesh component has an owner. This is why we cast this skeletal component dot owner to our pawn class. This is a node that we intend to be used on a pawn. Given that vehicles, weapons and all these kind of things can use animation trees as well, you could add nodes that were specific to weapon, vehicle or NPC functionality. You'd simply get the skeletal component dot owner again and cast it to uh, your relevant class, vehicle, weapon, NPC, whatever you like, and just use it as a standard class. Uh, use it as a standard animation node, sorry. So after we've done all this basic setup, we just have our, our simple uh, logic to determine which child we want to actively set. Obviously if we're crouching and our active child is not already crouched, child 1, then we want to set this to set child 1 as the active child. And we do the same for prone and obviously for standing. Now this node is only fairly basic. There is a lot more that you can do in a node if you want. You can handle more complex logic, provide properties for the artist to set, look up nodes for the pawn and set variable values for things like weapon blending or really whatever you want. AnimNode.uc in the engine directory is the base class for all animation nodes, so I recommend you check that out if you're planning on writing your own custom nodes to see exactly what you can and can't control. Just one thing is, uh, obviously Unreal Script is not designed, it's very slow, it's much slower than C++, so it's not designed to be doing a lot of complex things every tick. If you are planning on writing your animation nodes, and it's not really that bad to use your own blends for it, then I recommend that you do just use basic blends because they are ticked in the engine itself. Uh, you don't want to have too many of these custom nodes ticking through script because while it won't slow it down noticeably, occasionally it can be enough. So what we'll do is quickly just jump in to our animation tree. Now that we have, we no longer need this prone blend or this anime node blend by posture, we can get rid of those. And when we go 
blend by, you can see here we have an AT anim node uh, blend by posture. Uh, you don't actually need to do anything special to add your custom nodes to this list, um, providing they are derived from uh, UDK um, anim node blend, whichever one it's called, uh, they will automatically appear in this list once you restart the editor. So hook these up, we've got our standing here, we've got our crouched here, and our prone here, and obviously I just want to sort of shuffle these things around a bit to make it look a bit a bit neater, but we'll close this, save our package, jump in game, and as you can see when I enable prone, we go to our prone, when I disable prone, we go to our stand, I'm not sure if I have a something bound to crouch or not, probably not, but uh, similar, oh I do, C is crouch, but obviously we don't have a crouching animation there in place for it, so you can see it just goes to the uh, normal T pose. Also just to show you I haven't cheated in uh, atporn.uc here I've got enable prone and disable prone just setting B prone to so true or false and you can see this class is you know a, a fair bit less now when we don't have the post in anim tree function um, to actually look up our blend. So that's all for this video tutorial I hope it was useful to you and I hope you check out future ones. Cheers.